on our members. We, we are going to start in the next two minutes with our meeting. Good afternoon. I hope that we are all okay. Two minutes, we are starting with the meeting. Thank you. Good evening, Chair. Good evening, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. How are you, sir? Very, very well. Well, I'm now with Mikalakis. Chairperson, before was, we start, uh, I just want yes. to let you know, I'm stuck here in Makiliketla and we don't have the best uh, signal today. So if I disappear for a minute or two somewhere during the meeting, it's... Uh, not due to my own fault, just know my internet is not all that strong for some reason today. Okay, no problem. And we will know that. But please okay. come in because you are in the free state. And yes, uh, we might discuss the details. I won't uh, miss it the world. No Thank problem. you very much, Chair. Hey, what about the car, Google it. Don't choose again. Don't choose away. Come, don't choose. Come and help. It's like a plaque of money. Say to the plaque of money. Let me have a top left. Yes, let me have a top left. Hey, you want to hear? Yes, is that right? That's why you can now go with your speech and do over with your hand. Uh, let me just speak. Most chairperson, are the minutes ready as well? The report is ready as well, chairperson. Yes, uh, we yes. start. Why don't we start with the free state and uh, release then we the, the, the report? Yes, chairperson. Yes, I think we start with the free state. Yes, chair. 
Yes. Is the MEC in the meeting? Chair. Yes, Chairperson. Good afternoon. I'm here in the meeting. Oh, wonderful. How are you, MEC? Fine. How are you, Chair? I, I saw that uh, you were quelling tensions in in uh, Bloomfontein, Mangaun. Yeah, thanks, Chair, for the support. The whole country Thank was you. observing that, that situation. It was not a good situation. But we are happy that uh, you calmed waters and everything is okay now. Thank you, Recording Chair. in progress. Yes. L let's start with our meeting. Uh, I want to take this opportunity to to heartily welcome all of you in this important meeting on a, on a Friday, and we want to really apologize. Parliament at this time of the year is at a point where we do appropriations. We consider the budget votes of different departments. It is quite hectic and very, very much flexible in terms of what it does. Uh, five minutes just before the meeting at two o'clock, we were informed by the office of the chief group that there are changes and, and the fact that parliament was to continue beyond uh, the stipulated time, uh, which means that uh, we, we resumed at two o'clock until uh, very, very late uh, before this meeting, and that is why we decided to reschedule this meeting for five o'clock because it is an important meeting that carries important items that needs to be considered by the by the by, by the committee. There are two specific items. The first item relates to the intervention in the Metsima Hole local municipality. Uh, yeah and the second one relates to the adoption of the report by by the committee itself uh, as the committee is aware uh, the budget vote for both uh, human settlements as well as for for water and sanitation is scheduled on friday uh, the fourth uh, where they there will be a debate in the house uh, that is why it is important that we must uh, look at our report as engaged and discussed last week Friday with a view of adopting it uh, in that sense, readying ourselves for the meeting on, on Friday. With that, I propose that we are going to, uh, we, we start with the uh, presentation, uh, the retabling of the intervention by the provincial government of, of the free state. And and then and so that after that we, we are able to release the MEC, the HOD, and all other departmental officials in the in the meeting. Once we are done, we will then uh, consider the report of, of the committee. I I I I don't have any apologies, but I can see that about two or so members of the committee have not logged in. Let's hope that they will log in in due course of the meeting. Uh, I, I think we are okay. We satisfy the requirements of the meeting. We have about nine members. We form an agenda, uh, which uh, enables us to proceed with the meeting. Starting with the first item on the agenda, as you can see, it is a retabling of the notice of intervention in the Metima Holo local municipality. Uh, just as a way of a background, I will not go into those details. The report is before you. Uh, sometimes in 2018, 2019, I think, uh, the provincial government of the free state invoked section 1391B to, to Metima Holo. As we all know, invoking section 1391B of the constitution to a municipality it means that this municipality is unable to fulfill its executive obligations under the constitution. 
uh, there could well be one or two or three or four issues which are quite problematic and those issues impede the municipality from uh, fulfilling its executive obligations. On those basis, the, 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 the department involved uh, this particular measure. I may hasten to add that uh, these measures that are, are, are leased to the municipality is not for the first time. Uh, the municipality around 2017 or so, it was dissolved and a new municipal, municipal council had to be established with the by-elections proclaimed by the provincial government of the, of the free state facilitated by the IEC. And this is a council that uh, is along those particular lines. There was a big of discussion and some issues, like I call them issues between uh, ourselves, me acting on behalf of the committee and the provincial government of the free state uh, represented by the MEC as well as the, 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 the former deputy minister of, of COCTA. Uh, because in our view, in terms of the deadlines and the defined parameters and time frames stipulated by the, by, by the law, uh, in our view, the submission to, to, to parliament was quite problematic. I don't want to go to those particular details. It's a history, we had a, a, a discussion about what needs to happen. And ultimately we, we were of the view that because there were some procedural issues about the tabling of this, that uh, the, the provincial government of the, of the free, free state should restart the process, uh, retable uh, the, the submission properly to the, to the committee so that the committee must look at it and ultimately uh, decide whether it approves or disapproves uh, the intervention. This is how I recollect uh, all those particular discussions. But the department is here, they will deal with the presentation. And based on that presentation, we will then discuss, engage, and, and find a way of, of moving forward uh, the process. As I said, MEC, you are heartily welcome, Honorable MEC together with your team uh, of officials to this important meeting. Let's engage, feel free to raise issues with us. You know, we all, the material times engage with you, look at, at issues with a view of ensuring that uh, we move uh, accordingly together uh, in that respect. Uh, over to you, can I invite you uh, to, to have some work with us? And in the process, you will guide us on how you want to uh, on how you want to proceed. Uh, my view is that given the nature of the issue itself, it mustn't be a long presentation uh, so that uh, we are afforded more time to engage with it, to ask questions, and ultimately decide on the proper course of action. Uh, without further ado, over to you, uh, 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 Honorable MEC. Uh, thank you, uh, Chairperson, and thanks for the opportunity. Greetings to all honorable members and um, uh, my HOD and the, the staff. I forthrightly wish to apologize. My voice would not come out clear. Uh, I, am, I have a flu. I was asleep, but I then thought uh, I, must, I must join this committee. It's important when I'm called to respond promptly. So. Uh, if my voice is not really uh, uh, that audible enough, I will apologize. But I will I'll try to be to be as slow so that I'm, I'm I'm very clear. It would not take long. I think the first uh, uh, page, the layout of the presentation. If you can pass it, uh, you go to to the next page uh, on the on the introduction and background there. Thank you. Uh, let me take this opportunity to welcome the the opportunity and invitation to brief the select committee on the constitutional, procedural, and substantive matters relating to the retabling of the notice of intervention in terms of section 139, subsection AB of the Constitution of Affairs of Metsimaho Local Municipality. Honorable Chairperson, members, section 
160 of the Constitution of the Republic enjoins that, amongst other things, a municipal council makes a decision concerning the exercise of all the powers and the performance of all the functions of the municipality. And D of that say may employ personnel that are necessary for the effective performance of its function. Section 5.6 of the Municipal Systems Act expands the above point by addressing the appointment of managers directly accountable to the municipal manager. The Metima Hall Council, since election in 2017, has not appointed such managers. To make matters worse, the municipal manager was placed on suspension since the 3rd of July, 2018. The, municipal, the municipality has operated for some time with middle managers acting as section 56 managers and even acting as municipal managers and accounting officer. The municipality policy on acting appointments bars the appointment of anyone appointed below the level of senior manager to act as a municipal manager. Clearly the practice in Metimaholo was in contravention of the constitution and at least two, two a very important, two important pieces of the legislation the System Act and the Municipal Finance Management Act, including municipal own policy on acting appointments. In trying to resolve the impasse, uh, Chairperson, we seconded an official to support the municipality through section 154. And subsequently, he was then appointed by the municipality as the acting uh, municipal manager. However, his work was made very difficult by some officials who wanted the abnormal practice of appointment, appointing people against the municipal own policies to continue. Even going to court, supported by some councillors in, 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 in the municipal area. A council meeting on the 9th of December, 2019, which was going to consider entirely a report on filling the vacant position of senior managers was disrupted and the contract of the official seconded to and subsequently appointed as the acting municipal manager came to an end on the 17th February 2020. The executive council invoked section 1391B of the constitution in the affairs of Metima whole local municipality in the meeting, in its own meeting held on 11 February 2020. On the 20th of February 2020, we went to the Metsimaho local municipality to communicate officially the decision of the executive and the resolution of the exco to, towards the municipality. Communication with the NCOP, the minister and the free state legislature was signed on the 25th February 2020 and dispatched to different stakeholders. The select committee is further requested to note that even the section 139 was contested by some within the municipality and its administration. In that regard, we approached the Free State High Court to set aside the council, a bogus council meeting that took place after we had communicated the executive resolutions to the municipal council. The High Court ruled in our favor and declared the municipality duly and the administration at the end of August 2020. In October 2020, the Free State and COP delegation invited us and the leadership of the municipality to come and make a presentation before them. The NCOP delegation was unanimously on the need for us to expedite the appointment of senior managers and to resolve the protracted legal matter between the municipal, the municipality and its own municipal manager. Although the appointment of senior managers was one of the substantive matter on the intervention, in November 2020, the intervention team prepared a roadmap for the appointment of the senior managers for consideration by the municipal council. When the municipal council refused to cooperate on this matter, 
the intervention team approached the MEC in line with the terms of reference and particularly clause 8 of this appointment letter, which basically gives the executive representative the power to appoint senior managers in such instances. A report was submitted to EXCO on the 10th of December 2020, and EXCO Alia confirmed the intervention in the affairs of the Maximahul municipality in terms of section 139, subsection 1b of the Constitution of the Republic of South Africa, Act 108 of 1996 as amended. Mandates the EXCO representative to uplift the suspension of the municipal manager in line with the court decision. And three, note that the recruitment and selection process for the appointment of senior managers has been kick-started. It is on the basis of the first resolution in the above mentioned bullet that we are retabling the intervention before the select committee. The substantive measures, the following were raised as substantive matters at a time the municipality was initially placed under intervention on the 11th of February. Scheduling of council meeting, but eventually abandoned, vacant position of senior managers from 31 December 2017 uh, until 31 August 2018, alleged political interference, regression in audit outcome, regression in government oversight, deterioration in system of internal controls, high concern on financial viability and areas of high concern and possible irregularities. In conclusion, Honorable Chair, I've tried to capture the brief as directed in your memorandum, we have demonstrated that the municipal council has failed in its constitutional obligation as outlined above, and also in giving effect to other relevant pieces of legislation. We want to state upfront that we had no option but to invoke section 139, 1B of the constitution, although there was a call from, from many quarters that we should have dissolved the municipal council in terms of section 139, 1B of the constitution. We, have, we hope we will not leave to regret our decision not to dissolve the municipal. Although I know that this is not the platform for, to report on the progress on the intervention, I would like to bring quickly the following items to the attention of the select committee. Council meetings are now sitting as scheduled and disposing all matters before them. The filling of position of senior managers is at an advanced stage with some of them beginning with their duties now in 1st June and others anticipating to start from uh, the 1st of July. The suspension of the municipal manager from the 3rd of, uh, uh, of uh, August 2018 with full pay was uplifted with effect from 8th January in line with the court decision, 2021. The audit outcome is a qualified for the year 2019 and 2020. We are convinced that the other substantive matters will be addressed through the appointment of senior managers. A further progress report will be presented to the select committee and the minister by the end of June 2021. I thank you, Chairperson, and thank honorable members for the opportunity you have given to us. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, honorable MEC. Let me just check with you. Uh, is there any other person who wants from your team, especially the HOD, who wants to remind the MEC one or two important issues that he might have not uh, raised? before I take questions, or you are okay? We're okay, thank you, Chepesa. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Uh, as politicians, we have good backup uh, of our administrators. Yes, thank you very much. With that, can I invite the floor for, for questions, for clarifications, for deliberations, anything from members of parliament? Over to you, the floor is yours.
on a on a Only two of you, okay. Over to you, on and on Mikalakis. In that order. Can you starting with you, Chair? Good evening, Chair. Who are we starting with, Chair? I'm starting. I'm starting with you, uh, Honorable Sheikh. Again, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, thank you very much, uh, Chairperson, and uh, thank you very much, uh, Honorable MEC, for that uh, presentation. Chair, I think um, in light of some of our decisions and uh, the fact that uh, they have been set a reasonable amount of progress um, with this intervention. Um, and perhaps I'm also glad that the progress has also been presented because what I'm, I want to just be clarified on chair is uh, the actual time frame uh, uh, when the section 139B uh, would be uplifted chair or lifted. Thank you chair. Okay, uh, Honorable Silakun. Uh, good evening, Chair, and to the MEC, and to the HOD, and to fellow members of the of the committee. Chair, mine is basically just a few uh, questions of clarity. Firstly, to to the MEC, when the MEC says that council sits per normal and they fulfil their responsibility as council, uh, one would have loved to have heard, you know such a statement from members of council that are currently serving in that particular council. So my question will be why did we not maybe uh, invite, you know, uh, members of, of, of councillors from different political parties mm -hmm. that can actually attest or confirm what the MEC has been saying in terms of that things has actually changed. There is council meeting, sitting, and they are fulfilling their responsibility. That is the first question. And the second question, Chair, would be, I see in terms of the suspension of the municipal manager, that it was suspended from the 3rd of July, 2018, and then it was uplifted for on the 8th of January, 2021. Now, my question would be, who suspended the MM? Uh, by the fact that it was uplifted, it means that was not a legal decision what has been the cost for that particular suspension and how are they going to recover that amount in terms of the people that actually have suspended the MM, which was illegal based on the courts. And also the third one chair would be basically in terms of, you know, this particular council have a tendency of contesting every decision that is made by the minister in the province. Can, can the MEC inform the committee or maybe take us into his confidence that, you know, they, they have actually, you know, they have actually resi uh, resolved not to, to, to challenge any decision whatsoever that the MEC is, is taking in this particular instance, or are they happy, you know, with the decision that was taken and they are, not, they are no longer contesting? And also, Chair, in terms of consequent management, all these challenges, all these cases that these members of this particular council have been contesting, you know, against the MEC, what are the plans to make sure that we, we recover the money, you know, for all these, you know, uh, challenges that was, was done in terms of this particular intervention? Thank you very much, Chair. Uh, thank you very much. Honorable Mikalakis. Thank you very much, Chair. Chair, if, if I may, I'm going to leave my camera off due to the, to the internet problem, if you don't mind. Um, Chairperson, my, my first question that I want to ask you is, um, I believe, as you've mentioned in the introduction, um, that, and I remember as well, there were some glitches with regards to informing the NCOP and the tabling and, and all of that, that wasn't according to what the normal procedure was. Um, so if I, if I remember correctly uh, what the circumstances was, it would in fact mean that the initial intervention uh, before the NCOP pointed it out 
was irregular. Um, and that's why it has to be tabled again. Please correct me if I'm if I'm wrong. But if that is the circumstances, Chair, um, I very much want to know um, who within the provincial department is going to take responsibility for that, because an intervention is not something that we that we invoke lightly. Um, it actually takes the the power away from the democratically elected. Uh, persons on on local government uh, level and invest it into into the provincial level. It's not something that that is done lightly, and uh, it's not the first time that that it gets done in the province. So the province should know the procedure by now. Why was it not followed in the in the initial instance um, to such an extent that that a repeat was necessary? That's my first question. My second question, Chair, is um, who, re who reappointed um, the municipal manager uh, Molala? Um, was he was he suspended? Um, I just want some clarity on on that. Um, then I also want to know, Chair, if I read the last slide correctly, um, most of the the things that that the provincial government basis its decision to to intervene uh, on um, have actually to some great extent been addressed. So what I want to know from from the provincial government is for how long does it foresee uh, the intervention to have to last if most of those concerns um, have been making good strides and, and in some cases even been addressed completely. Um, is it still necessary for an intervention? And, and if so, uh, for how long do you foresee it will be necessary to have this municipality under administration? And then my final question, Chairperson, is um, with regards to... Uh, well, wait, uh, then I just want to know the MEC of the Free State often invokes Section 154 of the Constitution. Uh, which is a mandate to him to support the municipalities, but it's not an intervention. Um, I would like to, to get the MEC's view on this and um, on specifically on, on, on that uh, method of supporting the municipalities instead of a full-scale intervention. And then um, can we also as a committee uh, just get a copy. I don't know. I haven't been supplied with it, but can we just get the directive that was issued to uh, Metsi Moholo municipality prior to invoking the intervention? Um, usually, uh, it accompany is accompanied by a letter before we can move on to, to intervention. I haven't seen the initial directive letter uh, saying to the municipality that they, uh, well, the 131 uh, a 139-1A directive. If we can just get a copy of that, uh, I think that would also just make the, the committee's documentation uh, complete. Thank you very much, Chair. I appreciate it. Honorable Motsamai, followed by Honorable Zukiswan Muta. Galebuka Chairperson. Chairperson, give us the same word, MM, Governor Nasa Stingy, Molala. Suspend you. I'll give a only charity eight toller hits it or Levagakin La Horonoya and Abba. We don't interpret what I'm going to because he was suspended. No, Levagaliski, Laura Wheel King, or I will be called Anna Patal, Anna Talamo suspension. I can be doing in trades over Abu, Kalabashi. Okay, honorable Zita. Th thank you very much, Chair. Uh, good evening, and thanks for the presentation by the MSC. But what I would like to know from the MSC Honorable Zita, your life is very bad. Honorable Nita, Honorable Nita, Honorable Nita is the recruitment of senior position. 
senior managers in the municipality. I, my, what is bad? Yes, 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 yes. Repeat everything. Your line was very bad. You were inaudible. Do you hear me now, Chair? Chair, do you hear me? Now? Yes. No, not at yes. all. Repeat Can I switch off the, the pitch? Yeah, switch it, it off. Better? That was, yes. Can, can I switch it off? Yeah, switch it off, Honorable Nita. Thank you very much, Chair. Do you hear me now? Yeah. Can you hear me now, Chair? Yes, we can hear you very well now. All right. Chair, uh, what I would like to know, uh, one of the critical issues that was raised sharply in the previous meetings with the, with the MEC, was the issue of recruitment of senior managers. I see in terms of their report, they are saying they are, they are at, the, at the advanced stage. For me, it doesn't tell me anything. What I would expect from the MSC is to be specific if the posts were seven posts in total. We want to know how many to which critical position have they recruited so that we see that we are moving to the right direction. The other one, Chair, is on the issue of the audit outcome. The, 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 the report from presentation from the MEC is saying they are on qualification, but they are not uh, giving us details in terms of their audit outcome. We know that the qualification, what are the basis of the qualification? Are there any uh, fruitless expenditure, unauthorized expenditure for how much and what is the process for what? So those are the things that are key for me in this presentation, Chair. Thank you very much. All right, thank you very much. Uh, let me see. I want thank us to, no, not before that, I want, is my I want to make some contribution and I propose that we must start there. Uh, in terms of the invocation of of section 139, 1B. And I want us want you to take us through properly in terms of the procedure itself of of what happened in the past and what has happened now, so that we are able to check whether we are, in terms of the right procedure, we are in terms of the law and there are no problems whatsoever. For me, that, is, that should be the starting point. I'm saying this because firstly, you are read, um, and I'm following what Honorable Mikalakis was asking you are retabling this intervention. Am I correct to say that you want us to, to approve or to disapprove the intervention? That is the first question, very clear. You want us to approve or disapprove the intervention or what is it that you want us to do as the NCOP? Two, in terms of this presentation you made to us, EXCO took a decision on the 11th of February, 2018, so, so 2020. And in terms of the law, you were supposed to have uh, informed the NCOP and the minister, of course, within 14 days. I can see, I think it's page six, of your submission, you say a letter was dispatched on the 25th of February 2020 to the NCOP. Let me just remind you, this is a matter that we, we contested. We distributed the information to the then Deputy Minister about what happened and, 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 and that in our view, this uh, intervention was not in line with the requirements of the Constitution. That is why you retabled 
you are retabling this intervention and an exco. The provincial exco has taken a decision to a proper decision to place the municipality under administration. If you may take us through that process very slowly about what has happened and at what point did exco retake a decision again to place this municipality under administration. I'm asking this question because we've got to be meticulous in what we do. We ought to be procedurally correct in what we do, and we do not have to create unnecessary problems that will cause crisis to the provincial government or the municipality or even uh, the NCOP. Once we have answered that question about what happened, the next question will then follow to say, since EXCO, the provincial EXCO took a decision to, re, uh, to, to re-invoke section 139.1b, what has happened until now? So that our discussions must be based on legality. We must be legal in what we do. And, and for me, once we have crossed that step, we have answered those questions. It will then be very easy to engage with the questions that honorable members have asked, which in my view are also genuine and pertinent questions about what happened subsequent to that and how do we resolve the issues of the MM and how do we ensure that we normalize the situation, the audit opinion, uh, the filling of positions, and all of that. For me, that is quite important so that in every step of the way, we, we, we are legal in our approach. If we can just maybe perhaps start there, it will help us to understand quite properly and, and so that whatever suggestions and assistance that we may want to provide, we do that with the full understanding of the facts that are before us. Over to you, uh, Honorable Lemmy. Thank, thank you very much, uh, Chairperson. And thank you to uh, honorable members. Uh, just to trace the steps as, as per your directive, Chairperson. Uh, it was on 11th of February, uh, 2020, when Exco uh, made a resolution to place the municipality under Section 139, and um, a communication to the NCOP minister and um, Free State Legislature was on the 25th of February, uh, 2020, which is a day outside. Should have been on the 24th. Uh, the communication went uh, through on the 25th. Uh, 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 of February. Now, uh, upon the interaction and advice that uh, we are out in a day, we should uh, find a way to correct our that mistake. That's why we are requesting the select committee to consider the matter in terms of approving or disapproving. Uh, we understand that it is uh, upon you to make a, a decision. That's why we make a request. So we we have co tried now to try to communicate properly and uh, on time to say, can we be please be heard on on the matter you are you are raising. And then, if you allow me, chair, can I try to respond to uh, comments and questions of honorable members. Uh, the I first want to help, sorry, I hear you. You request yes. confirmation that you submitted the the request for approval a day before that. Now, a day later. Now, uh, yes, yes, I I I I am aware of that. Now Thank you. since then did, did you as the provincial exco took another decision or not? And if yes, when did we do that? We did 
trying to trace the exact date uh, subsequent uh, to, to, to that realization, uh, which I would uh, furnish a concrete date. I don't want to thumb suck it. Uh, uh, but we did subsequent to that realize, and that's why we are making the, the presentation now. Uh, to say we request you to reconsider the matter, but that, 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 just let me see. I want to have, and I I beg the indulgence of members of the committee because I think if we don't follow that step, the chain will be broken in the process. That day that you retook or you took a decision again or whatever that you did, it is quite important for this committee. It's 10 December 2020. 2020 on the 10th. What did you do exactly on the 10th of December? That's when we we took a decision to retable the matter. Before the NCOP. Before the and NCOP. The and the yeah, minister. And, 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 and the minister. And, and, and it only happens when did you retable to the NCOP? We, we made a request. Uh, uh, when, when did you submit it to the NCOP? I'm not sure about the immediate date thereafter, but uh, on the 10th, we make the reconfirmation and made the request to the minister and the and NCOP. The NCOP. Okay, just, just, just there. Most, most, Mr. Moss Manele, have you got any information when mm -hmm. was this matter brought to our attention again? Chairperson, with with your permission, what we'll do, I'll consult with the official in NCOP and provide the committee with exact date of the table in chairperson. I don't want that, to that guess. That is quite important. Issue. Just try to do it now. That is so quite important because we need to take a decision as a committee uh, in terms of what is it that we need to do in the light of this facts that are on the table. Okay, chairperson. Yeah, 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 yes. Let me see. I suggest that you can, in the meantime, answer all the questions as posed by, by members. This is very much important so that uh, what if we agree or we don't agree, if we approve or we don't approve, we do that on the basis of all the information that is on the table because we also don't want to be seen to be on the wrong side of the law. Thank you very much. We can then proceed answering all the questions as posed by members. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Uh, on the first question of the honorable member, in terms of the, the envisage uh, date of ending date of the intervention is October 2020, which will uh, also answer the uh, honorable member uh, uh, Michaelakis also on the, on, the, on the period. With regards to uh, why council members and councillors or either Troika is not invited, I would uh, request chair maybe the matter should be at least uh, responded from, from your side. We were, were not uh, uh, requested to invite them. Otherwise we would do so at any given time if we are instructed to do so. The MMES was suspended and uh, uh, and the MM was suspended from then with full pay. And the council therefore handled the matter from where I stand. They handled the matter um, uh, in a shady way, such that the court decided against um, council and instructed council to reinstate Therefore, the court decision therefore reinstated the, the, the MM as per the court directive. Yes, there were initial implications, but the court ruling does apportion a specific uh, uh, party involved in the court uh, to, to make payment. And in this instance, on various uh, court rulings, the, the people who challenged us, the plaintiff in this instance, were the one who were um, 
uh, told by court to pay the cost. Um, so the process of recovery is is done by through our lawyers to all the, those people, by the municipality and by ourselves. Uh, uh, the time frames I've I've I've, I've answered this. Uh, is the reinstatement of the um, MM legal? Yes, it is legal because it, it's an implementation of a court decision. Uh, we are supporting municipalities through section 154. We've not done it only with this municipality. <coughs> Sorry, that's only under 139. We've done it with all other municipalities. We've been sending officials from uh, Cocta department to support on various uh, uh, functions or fields, in terms of skills, uh, in terms of uh, other programs that they must undertake. So we've we've been doing it to all municipalities, um, and this one was also not exception. And the municipality then, on the basis of the skill we have sent to them, in some instances makes decision on how to utilize that skill to benefit municipality. I agree we will send a copy of the letter that was sent to, to the municipality, placing them under uh, administration. As to why the MM is back, I honestly, honorable member, I think uh, I've, I've said it's as a result of a high court ruling and um, which was not contested even by the municipality. Yes, he was on full pay, uh, and uh, that was not the reason that influenced him coming back. It was a court ruling that influenced him uh, coming back. The How many people, uh, the section 56, it was six of them, uh, and uh, four of them, the matter has been concluded, and two of them is about to be, to be concluded. Yes, it's true, there are matters raised by the Auditor General um, of fruitless and wasteful expenditure, and in some instances, uh, matters of corruption, which we have been relate, uh, referred sorry, to um, uh, agencies of uh, uh, the state to attend to them, and they are they are really dealing with that. So, I've tried to to reply to to the questions of honourable members. I'm not sure uh, whether I, I did that to to their satisfaction, but I did my 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 best to do so. Chairperson, on the on the issue you 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 were instructing us to do as to when did we send communication to you from the 10th of December? I I think I'm informed that it's the 23rd of December when we communicated to to yourselves and the and the minister in the legislature. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Okay, okay. If that is the case, uh, it means that every legal step was was taken, uh, and that we must declare the first intervention on the eleventh of of February twenty twenty a a nullity because it was not uh, done in in terms of the constitution, and we can't reach that. And if you took a decision on the 10th of, of December and that you accordingly inform, inform the NCOP on the 23rd of December. It means that is in order. It is for us as the NCOP to decide whether we approve or disapprove this intervention. Uh, I think there is that clarity obtained, uh, honorable members. And the MEC has responded to the questions which were put forward by honorable members. I'm not sure whether is there anyone further who wants to raise one or two issues based on what I was discussing earlier on with the MEC, uh, as well as the questions that the MEC uh, has responded to. Yes, please, Chair. Yes, I see Mama Zukiswa. 